Hello everybody, welcome back to another video by Dissociated. This is Kaya, I'm the host of my system and the host of the Dissociated project. A lot of you have been asking us recently in the comments, Kaya, what is a subsystem? How does it work? Are they still alters? How is a subsystem made? I'm gonna do my very best to answer you, but first we need a little refresher on how DID forms in the first place. Once we understand how DID forms within the brain itself, it's a lot easier to understand more complex structures like subsystems. So DID is a trauma-based disorder that forms in childhood. It's formed due to repeated trauma before the ages of around seven to nine, and that child must be able to dissociate to a high level as DID is a dissociative disorder, and they must have an unstable connection to their primary caregivers. By the time children reach the age of around seven to nine and that time period in general, the personality or identity starts to integrate into what will become your identity for your whole life. And yes, that can change as you grow and experience new things and have your own traumas and your own heartbreaks and learn about the world and who you are. But it is still your one personality that you have. Before those ages, our personality is still forming. Our identity, who we are, is still forming. We experience different ego states that start as babies which are just things like, I'm hungry, I need love, I need food. Very basic concepts of what is needed and who you are. As you grow older, these different ego states, experiences, understandings of the world start to coalesce together to form one integrated personality. However, if a child during these really important formative years, while the personality and identity is still developing, experiences everything necessary to form DID, then they will be experiencing repeated trauma. In order to keep that child safe from the awareness of that trauma and make them able to function while experiencing and having some kind of awareness of what's happening to them, the brain dissociates from those experiences and it puts up amnesia walls in order to protect that child. So the child may sometimes remember what's happening to them and other times will have complete amnesia, no idea about the trauma that's going on. And that makes them able to live a normal life without being completely overwhelmed and utterly destroyed by the reality of what's happening to them that they cannot escape and have to dissociate from to survive. When they hit the ages of around seven to nine, the personality is unable to integrate in normal development like any other child would because these amnesia barriers, these dissociative walls are up and interfering with the integration of who they are as a person. And so because these different ego states, these different parts of them are unable to come together into one, multiple develop separately. Some will have awareness of this trauma, others won't. Some will hold certain parts of traumas or certain categories of trauma or certain emotions to do with trauma and others will have other roles dedicated to helping and experiencing life in general. This theory is called structural dissociation. It exists on a spectrum from normal dissociation, which is not structural dissociation, which everybody experiences. And then you move into structural dissociation in terms of primary structural dissociation, which is PTSD, all the way up to tertiary dissociation, which is DID, dissociative identity disorder. It's the most extreme form of post-traumatic stress that you can experience. We do have a video coming on structural dissociation if you would like to learn about that, so stay tuned. And if you are interested in all the stuff like the brain scans, how DID looks literally different in CAT scans to people who are pretending or acting as though they have DID. Also about things like PTSD, trauma, the trauma response and how that works in the brain, the neurobiology of it. If all that stuff is interesting to you, please go and have a look at our playlist, especially the tackling trauma playlist and the debunking DID playlist. Now that we have a basic understanding of how DID forms and how it works, we can better understand the function of subsystems. DID as I've just explained it, that would be the formation of a single system. System refers to all the alters within one body or a group of alters within one body. The average number of alters for a DID system sits somewhere between sort of 10 and 20. Depending where you look, the numbers are radically different and DID is a very underdiagnosed and under-researched disorder. We have the research that proves it exists and helps us to understand why it develops. We know for sure that it is a real thing, but there is still so much stigma around it and so little funding that the deeper and more complex mechanics of it is very misunderstood and difficult to get a grasp on. While that is the average number of alters, you only need to have two separate states of identity in order to be diagnosed with DID. Part of the definition is that they must have two or more different states of identity that function independently from each other. So it could be as small as two in a system, or it could be, I think the record number that we're currently aware of is around 4,000 alters. 
When you get into ulcers over the hundreds, that's when you're called polyfragmented. Polyfragmented systems typically have dealt with very extreme trauma and are much more reliant on coping with that kind of trauma and new stress and new traumas by splitting creating new alters and fusing, which is why there are so many in systems that are polyfragmented. But polyfragmentation is a topic for another time. So what is a subsystem? First of all, subsystem is a colloquialism that's gradually becoming more accepted by professionals. But at the time of recording this video, it is not a professional or clinical term. It's a colloquialism or a term that was adopted by the community of people who have DID and OSDD in order to explain their experiences and is gradually becoming adopted by therapists and other professionals. Subsystem refers to the existence of another system within a DID system. Some people when they think of this will immediately think of a type of subsystem that is similar to Russian nesting dolls where you have sort of a doll and then you open it and there's another smaller doll and then you open that and inside it there's another small doll and you open it and guess what? Inside there's another smaller doll. But that's only one type. So a lot of people who do visualize it in that way have heard of the type of subsystems in which an alter within a DID system has its own set of alters. It has its own system within that alter. So in essence, that alter presents as having a DID system of its own. Layers forming within and around it to create an increasingly complex and buried set of identities and amnesia to hide and process trauma. This keeps it separate and protected from the rest of the system. This this type of subsystem is sometimes seen in polyfragmented systems and helps explain why the number of alters can reach to over 100. There are theories that have been suggested as to why this happens. One that has been suggested is that the subsystem formed while that particular alter was front stuck and therefore other alters were unable to front to protect them from a particular trauma, resulting in them creating alters of their own in order to be able to deal with it and protect themselves. Again, once you develop DID, your brain has learned that that is how you deal with things like that. that is how you process it. Overwhelming trauma, extremely high stress, well, we need to put up amnesia barriers, we need to dissociate from it, and it will create a separate altar to hold and deal with those experiences in a way that makes life livable. While this type of subsystem seems to be more well known, it's not the only type of subsystem that you can have. It's also not the type of subsystem that we have. The information I can give you is very limited, as my own experience of it is limited to knowing about its existence, being told about it briefly by a therapist who is extremely specialized in DID and also attachment, and from vaguely knowing about the existence of at least two, potentially three, alters in that subsystem. So how does our subsystem differ from the Russian nesting doll style of subsystems? Ours is different in that our subsystem doesn't exist within another alter. Instead, our body has two separately functioning systems of alters. There's our main system, which obviously I'm part of, which has its own protectors, gatekeepers, caretakers, persecutors, trauma holders, littles, etc. And obviously the host, me, Kaya. However, not all of these alters are actually active. Some of these alters are dormant, existing alongside the main system, but seemingly inaccessible to most of us, as far as I know, is the subsystem, which is headed by two alters, who I'm vaguely aware of. What I'm going to explain now is how our subsystem works, as far as I know, and what I do know is very limited, but please know that just because this is how our subsystem works, or this is what we understand of how our subsystem works now, that may not be how it's gonna work for every system. In fact, it definitely won't be how it works for every system. And also there may well be things that we've got wrong that we will then see in a different way or learn more information about as our therapy progresses and as our healing continues forward. So none of this is set in stone. This is just how we understand it at this point in our healing. So according to our therapist, this subsystem deals with a completely separate separate type of trauma to what we know in the main system. And I still don't know everything from what the main system holds. I am unaware of the details of whatever happens in this subsystem, um, what they know and what this theme of trauma is or who was involved or who's in the subsystem, except for the vague ones that I know of that I've interacted with or other alters in the system have interacted with and I pretty much know nothing else. The two alters I'm aware of that I've met, kind of, sort of, are what I believe to be its primary protector and then potentially either a protective or persecutory gatekeeper. And this is complete guesswork. I initially thought that one was the host of their subsystem and that the other one was a primary protector or gatekeeper or, or a persecutor, but now I'm not sure. I was never sure to be fair, but now I'm even less sure about what necessarily their roles are. I just know that they head the system and they have the most interaction with our system. Other than that, mm -mm, none, nothing. So that's 
where I'm sitting on it currently. I know their names and vaguely how they look, and that's partially based off notes and drawings that we've found in sketchbooks, notepads, journals, etc. And I know a little bit about their personalities. They're both incredibly protective and defensive of the subsystem, and it's extremely rare for me to be able to have any contact whatsoever with them, and as far as I'm aware, it's also extremely rare for anyone else in the system to have any contact with them, except for I know that Sally is able to talk, but that's it. I've only been able to speak to them potentially two, maybe three times, and then found notes and things, so they do front. They've left drawings, notes, information, but not a lot. I'm also suspicious that another alter, who I've been told about and I've only actually interacted with myself a handful of times, may also be from this subsystem. That alter is a persecutor who's also a little, and he's not told anyone his real name. Not people within the system, and not the people from outside the system, our friends, who told us about his existence and that they'd spoken to him. He hasn't told anyone his real name. He's described where he lives inside in the inner world, but it's not a place that any of us in the main system are familiar with or able to access at all. It seems to exist in its own liminal space, and if he is part of the subsystem, then that would make sense, because that space, wherever the subsystem lives, if they even have an inner world, is completely inaccessible to us. When I have seen the two alters who head that subsystem, I've seen them standing, again, across like a liminal space, almost a non-existent space, and in front of a bright white light, and I can't access across that space. It's like literally standing in space, there's nothing there, it's empty nothingness, and then they're standing in front of a bright white light, and I can't get over there, and I can't see what's in the light or what, what's behind it, but I know that either that white light or beyond the white light is where the subsystem is, and that's why they stand in front of it and they protect it, similar to how Jade guards the cave system in our main system, which then leads to other spaces where a lot of the sort of deeper trauma halters and persecutors and stuff are took down there. We'll do a video on our inner world. It's a complex, very complex way for our brain to process and understand the compartmentalization. But yeah, I know that inside that white light, which again, I've only seen a handful of times when I've spoken to them or felt them close, that's the image that I got. And I know that on the other side or inside of the white light is the subsystem, if they even have an inner world. And if I am right in assuming that the persecutory little is actually from the subsystem, and the reason that we can't find him, and we don't recognize where he explains that he lives in the inner world, then if he is from the subsystem, it would make sense that that's why? And this is how it works a lot with our DID, is we, so much of it is guessing based off these tiny clues and hints and fragmented bits of information that we get from all over and trying to make sense of it as best we can. So to say that more clearly, most of this, including what I'm telling you now, is guesswork and assumptions and pieces of information pulled and drawn together into a patchwork from our own memories, notes, drawings, videos that have been left for us, and things that we've been told by therapists and friends who have met these alters. DID is complicated, and the amnesia and the dissociation makes it very difficult to move forward and make sense of what's going on in your brain. And DID, because it is such an individual disorder based on trauma, based on the specific experiences of one child, it presents itself uniquely in each system for each person with the ID. And it's through work like this and therapy that things can start to make sense. So for example, in 2018, when we just started the channel, at that point, Chloe had only been diagnosed for a year and was only aware of a handful of alters. Now in 2023, six years later, after intense therapy with multiple DID specialists, two professional diagnoses, support from friends who also have DID and the community of people who have DID and OSDD, lots of fusions, splits, videos that have been left for us and videos that we've posted publicly, voice notes, written notes, drawings, messages, hospitalizations, uncovering memories, trauma processing, and a near constant dedication to that trauma recovery, to integrating, not necessarily fusing, integrating and understanding our system is what has allowed us to uncover the depth of just how much fragmentation there actually is. It's difficult to understand it and make sense of it. And there are things that we'll remember and make sense of at some points and then we'll forget at other points. And memories get shifted around like a Rubik's cube, trying to get all the pieces together and to make one side one color. 
it's really complicated. It's complicated just for us in our own life and it's even more complicated when bits of it are online. And our understanding of it is never gonna be completely perfect, I don't think, unless we were to fully fuse. That's not to say that these altars are new. The vast majority have been there and existed since childhood and are just starting to make themselves known now or in the last five years. Some are fused, some have split into new altars, some have gone dormant, but mostly they've always been there and it's through our recovery and our integration of trauma memories, building a support network, medical and therapeutic healthcare, and deep internal searching that these layers protecting the hidden parts of our consciousness are slowly becoming visible. We hope that that sheds some light on how our subsystem works as far as we know and also how DID systems can progress through their healing journey, how you can come to terms with, oh, there's a lot more going on than I knew and that that is normal as you start to heal and things come to light. DID is there to hide the extent of the things that happen to you and the extent of the fragmentation, dissociation and amnesia that actually exists within your brain. And as you start to process it, work through it and heal, you're gonna start to learn more things. Things are gonna start to make sense and maybe they won't make sense and then they maybe will and maybe things will change a bit and it's all normal. Everybody's flying in the dark here, but the important thing is that we have each other to rely on and that the community has space for people to share their experiences and find some guidance and support in each other alongside, obviously, professional care. We hope that this helped explain subsystems a little bit. We hope that this was enjoyable, interesting, educational, and that you got something out of it. Please subscribe, ring the bell, and like this video. Have a look at our other stuff if you'd like to learn more about DID, about PTSD, or even meet some of the other alters in our system that do bring you videos. Stay safe, know that you are loved and cared about, and somebody is glad that you are here and existing. Lots of love, everybody. Bye.